On behalf of the Board of Directors of the Venice Interfaith Community Association, I welcome you to our 16th annual Interfaith Thanksgiving service. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are meeting virtually. Therefore, you can watch this service again at any time by tuning into Facebook, YouTube, or the Venice Interfaith website. Our service is a combination of prayer, reflections, and song. As an interfaith community, we come to share and enlighten each other of our traditions with no intention of offending anyone from another tradition. For we come together in a spirit of unity and not fear. We come together as a people of faith to learn from each other so that we might understand better the multiplicity of faith traditions in our city and in the world. The theme for our Thanksgiving service is Unite and Bind Us Together. This theme was taken from a prayer of the Baha'i Faith and is a prayer that may be considered by all of our faith traditions. It reads, O Lord, unite and bind together our hearts, join and accord all the souls, and exhilarate the spirits through the signs of your sanctity and oneness. O Lord, make our faces radiant through the light of your oneness. Strengthen the inner being of your children in the service of your kingdom. We come here knowing that to unite and bind us together is simply a respect and appreciation for each other, no matter what our faith tradition may be. Though we want to be with you during this pandemic, we must be with you through the gift of technology. Thank you for being with us in spirit. We hope you enjoy our interfaith Thanksgiving service and that it may be a source of uniting and binding us together. Let us pray. God of all creation, we stand in awe before you impelled by visions of the harmony of humanity. We are children of many traditions, inheritors of shared wisdom and tragic misunderstandings, of proud hopes and humble successes. Now is the time for us to meet in memory and truth, in courage and trust, in love and promise. In that which we share, let us see the common prayer of humanity. In that which we differ, let us wonder at human freedom. In our unity and our differences, let us know the uniqueness that is God. May our courage match our convictions and our integrity match our hopes. May our faith in you bring us closer to each other. May our meeting with past and present bring blessing for the future. Unite and bind us together. Hi, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the traditional American holiday where families and friends come together. And while this year may be a little bit more difficult, it is still one of the most important holidays that we celebrate. It is about America. It is about us as Americans. And this year, my message is unity and common ground. And I hope that you can find common ground with your friends and your family members and your neighbors this year because we as Americans must come together and we must stand together and we must uphold our American values. And Thanksgiving is a great reminder of what those American values are. So enjoy your Thanksgiving, enjoy your holidays, and please look for common ground with your friends and neighbors. Thank you.
This reading, entitled Reclaiming Thanksgiving, a Unitarian Universalist Holiday, follows on a piece by Carrie McDonald, who is Executive Vice President of the Unitarian Universalist Association. Mr. McDonald is a seventh generation Unitarian Universalist who lives in Medford, Massachusetts with his wife and two sons and self-identifies as a person of color. He writes, Now for many folks, Thanksgiving seems unremarkable, mainly consisting of stuffing yourself and watching football. I like to think of Thanksgiving as a holiday boiled down to its essentials, a shared meal in the presence of loving family and friends. In other words, a celebration of what is most important in life. It doesn't have to be fancy for holidays, including Thanksgiving, are usually fraught with family stress. Indeed, my own family has gone through changes in the last few years that have shifted the way we celebrate holidays, and not always for the better. But I've also spent Thanksgiving with no blood relations in sight, and instead in the company of warm friends. Time after time, I've witnessed people taking near strangers into their homes for Thanksgiving dinners. No questions asked. No one should have to be alone if they don't want to be for Thanksgiving, even if that means volunteering in a soup kitchen, which is no less a celebration of a shared meal. Most of all, for me, Thanksgiving is a spiritual holiday, one that I think represents the best of my hereditary faith, Unitarian Universalism. Like Unitarian Universalism, Thanksgiving is distinctly American. Rooted in New England, it embodies the contradictions of our pride and our failures, of our desire for self-reliance, and the reality of our interdependence. Perhaps most importantly, it is a practice of making time for shared experience, despite all the other distractions in our lives. It is a simple, nourishing, not necessarily glamorous, annual Sabbath. And yet, in some ways, Thanksgiving feels like an anachronism, out of place in our culture. I can't name another spot that is reserved for pausing to be grateful for our blessings, rather than obsessing, criticizing, overscheduling, feeling inadequate about not living up to the ideals which our society's lowest common denominator of shared experience, otherwise known as advertising, has led us to desire. Contemporary America, which has managed to commercialize every meaningful event or celebration in our lives is stumped by Thanksgiving. There's just not that much to sell for Thanksgiving other than turkey. The best the advertising mavens have come up with is Black Friday, which, as you know, isn't about Thanksgiving at all. The Reverend Galen Gingrich senior minister of the Unitarian Church of All Souls in New York City, suggests that the discipline of gratitude is where the value of gratitude resides. As a child, I remember sitting at the dinner table on Thanksgiving and one by one saying what we were thankful for. You may have done this as well. That seemed hard to me since we only did it once a year. That difficulty was instructive, though. How could we be so unaware of the blessings in our lives? I am very grateful that I can now find others with whom to share my faith and that I can work each week towards living out our Unitarian Universalist principles that are based on big, powerful, sometimes difficult ideas like love 
and dignity. What's on your list of things to be grateful for? Reverend Gingrich argues that a practice of gratitude reminds us of our interconnection with each other and the world. I would say that the mere intentionality of setting aside time to stop and think about what is important and to do so in the presence of people who are important to us is a bold, even rebellious act. And it requires practice, to be sure. Thanksgiving stands tall as a shameless plea for community, health, and kindness in the midst of an America characterized by corrupt and ineffective institutions, blind individualism, abuses of power, and economic malaise. But it survives. Thanksgiving comes again every year, stubbornly unwilling to be drowned out by the negativity that surrounds it. Giving Thanks, adapted from a Native American blessing. Let us for this moment become aware of the beauty of our lives and the grace that attends to beauty. Grandfather, we are thankful for the gifts of the sun and grandmother for the gifts of the earth we give thanks for the times of meaning, the times of purpose, our times together. Let us reflect on, on our struggles and how they have enabled and ennobled our growth. If we but shut our eyes, even for a moment, we can awaken to wonder and then we see with new eyes. The land, the sea, the creatures, one another. And if we can feel a sense of gratitude, that grace will grow corn in our hearts. Then we know beauty, then we know you, our great spirit. Ahoy. Mataki Owasan, we are all connected to the earth. We are all relations. Baruch Ata Adonai, blessed are you, God, who has given us the bounty of food and the blessing of family. I'd like to share some thoughts from Ruth Kaplan, who writes about why Jews love Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving seems to be the most popular American holiday for Jews. The most obvious reason, it's the great equalizer. We're all invited to the party. Ironically, it has come to be regarded as the kickoff to the holiday season which of course refers to the all-pervasive Christmas with a touch of Hanukkah on the side. Though the holiday of Thanksgiving has a, also a touch of religious content, it is of the universal variety. Turkey, albeit of the kosher variety, can be enjoyed just as it is with their non-Jewish neighbors. The traditional Thanksgiving meal is likewise an attractive feature that resonates with Jews since Jewish people love to eat and are very comfortable with the concept of tradition, family storytelling, and giving thanks. Eating the same basic holiday foods every year for us resembles the food-based customs of Passover, Hanukkah, and Rosh Hashanah. Some even theorize that this festive harvest holiday was based originally on the Jewish festival of booths, Sukkot. The values of hospitality and expressions of gratitude embedded 
in the original story still ring true. Thanksgiving reminds us as Americans that we are all a nation of immigrants. Our pilgrim forebearers arrived at our Massachusetts shore seeking religious freedom. Most Jewish people can relate to their own family histories, which involve stories of immigration from not so distant past. The United States is, after all, a grand experiment in diversity, from which Jews have benefited more than in any other society in our history. It is clearly within the interest of the Jewish community to guard these values of inclusivity and mutual respect and push back against the wave of exclusion and intolerance of the other that we have sadly seen rearing its ugly head recently. Jews love Thanksgiving because it is a holiday that marries American and Jewish values by emphasizing what unites us all. On Thanksgiving, a national holiday created by President Abraham Lincoln, in the midst of the most divisive civil war, Americans of all stripes take time out to express gratitude for our good fortune to share in America's bounty and to recommit to fulfilling America's promise of equality for all. What could be more Jewish than aspiring towards tikkun olam, as we say in Hebrew, repair of the world, for our beloved country. Thanksgiving holiday from a Muslim's perspective by Alal Hussein. Personally, I think Thanksgiving in America is a beautiful holiday. Thanksgiving meal is about sharing a bountiful feast with the people you love. The holiday contains good spirit and noble message. 
it is a secular holiday, but has deeply religious and spiritual meanings. I am not an Islamic scholar, so the perspectives expressed are mine, personal opinion about the Thanksgiving holiday. I found the scholars divided in two thoughts about Thanksgiving. One group sees no issues celebrating the holiday, and the second group marks it as harem, not permissible. After carefully studying the split opinions for a few years, I tend to lean towards the opinion of the first group. As a Muslim, I don't find any problem living in America like an American, behaving like an American, or engaging in American culture, as long as the lifestyle or behavior does not contradict with my religious boundaries. Thanksgiving is a holiday when the family comes together. Thanksgiving Day centers around the principles such as being thankful, thanking God, Allah, keeping family ties, and feeding others. None of these values contradict the teachings of Islam. Islam not only teaches us to thank God, but we are also to thank our parents, our spouses, our friends, neighbors, and all those who surround us. Maintaining family relationships is prescribed in the Quran, and it is the Sunnah custom of our beloved prophet. We try to take advantage of the days off from work and school and make it a priority to be with family or friends during Thanksgiving. We don't necessarily make it a tradition to cook a Thanksgiving meal every year, but we do occasionally make halal permissible roasted turkey and share with friends. Other years it's just potluck, a trip to somewhere, nothing set in song. We say Bismillah in the name of God and thank Allah before and after each meal every day. How Buddhists Give Thanks at Meals by Stephen Goodhart. Everyday Buddhists all over the world recite the five contemplations at mealtime. These five simple sentences have endured for over 25 centuries because of the depth of compassion and wisdom inherent in them. These verses gently remind us to be fully present in the moment. They remind us to walk lightly on this earth and to consider our purpose for being here. They remind us to be virtuous in body, speech, and mind. They remind us to be mindful of unwholesome acts such as greed, anger, and delusion, and to transform them with insight, wisdom, and loving kindness. In a way, you could say that the five contemplations convey the very heart of the Buddha's teaching. I offer these contemplations as a thanksgiving grace for this holiday season. This food is the gift of the whole universe, the earth, the sky, and much hard work. May we live in a way that makes us worthy to receive it. May we transform our unskilled states of mind, especially our greed. May we take only foods that nourish us and prevent illness. We accept this food so that we may realize the path of practice. May you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, and my neighbors, our country, all the nations of the world, all the creatures and plants of this beautiful world, may all beings everywhere be happy, satisfied, and safe.
sexy day than the dog Secret night and I think to myself What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do They really say I love you I hear babies cry I watch them grow They'll learn much more Than I'll ever know And I think to myself What a wonderful A Thankful Spirit Will Change Your Life by Patrick Oban. For many years, I thought being thankful was simply a spiritual duty we have to God as believers for the blessings he has given us. Yes, the Lord deserves our thanksgiving for what he has given to us. But besides his primary reason, thanksgiving has a significant impact on the one who is giving thanks. A grateful spirit is a priceless spiritual treasure. It opens a person's spirit to receive from God and create an atmosphere for a manifestation of the supernatural as much as a bitter, complaining, or unforgiving spirit closes a person's spirit from receiving from God and even attracts oppression from demonic spirits. Developing a thankful spirit will change your life. People are repelling their miracles and creating an unfriendly atmosphere for divine interventions without realizing it. There is a pervasive spirit of ingratitude or a sense of entitlement especially in the culture that surrounds us. An ingrate does not see any benefit from what others have done and feels as though he or she can make it without them. A sense of entitlement makes us not to appreciate what others are doing for us because we feel we deserve it. It is our right. 
or they owe us that duty. Make out time today to appreciate the things that God and the people around you have done for you, from the very small to the big ones. Are you grateful for your parents, siblings, spiritual leaders, friends, and others who have made contributions to your life? See what happens to your life from today if you cultivate a thankful spirit and begin appreciating even the little things that God and the people around you have done rather than see what you do not have or worse still, complaining or becoming bitter about how others have not treated you right. In everything, Look for a reason to give God thanks. The Thanksgiving donations received will be given to All Faiths Food Bank and Laurel Civic Association. All Faiths Food Bank was founded by a group of individuals who through their respective organizations were feeding the hungry. They combined efforts in 1989 to incorporate as a nonprofit organization. It has been a certified member of Feeding America since 1990. As the food bank grows and develops, their number one priority is and always will be to feed the hungry. Our second recipient of tonight's offering is the Laurel Civic Association. Laurel Civic was founded 50 years ago by a group of volunteers who wanted to bring much needed development to the Laurel community. It became a nonprofit organization in 1990, providing services to low-income families and at-risk children through activities that educate, provide positive social interaction, and lead to self-sufficiency. Each year, Laurel Civic programs provide services to more than 1,000 adults and over 500 children, generating measurable results that empower families and youth. Your donations, no matter how small or large, do much to help those in need. Instruction on how to make your donations are at the end of your program. Thank you for your generosity. I come before you today And there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me. For all the blessings that I cannot see. Thank you, Lord.
Can all religions celebrate Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a day for families and friends to gather together to remember the blessings we have by living in a country that allows us freedoms, which include the freedom to express our religious beliefs. Thanksgiving gives us all a chance to take a step back and think about everything that we have and the people we love. Thanksgiving is unifying because everybody, no matter what background or belief system, has things for which to be thankful. Thanksgiving isn't necessarily about religion. Today, it's an accepted and model American holiday, despite the history. It's about friends and family, or whatever else you've got, and for being grateful for all that we have. Thanksgiving is a reminder to unite and bind us together. So, can all religions celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes, I am sure all religions can celebrate Thanksgiving. As we are in the midst of the corona crisis, we offer the following prayer. Prayer for a pandemic by Cameron Wiggins Phelan. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May those who have the luxury of working from home Remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May those who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools done or closed, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel a trip, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May those who settle for quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love during this time. When we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace to God and our neighbor. Amen. We are gathered in grateful celebration of our many blessings. We have blessed each other by this time together. It's been so hard for us to get together. We've been divided by virus protocols, politics, divisions. Divisions can intensify, instigate fear and distrust, but not at this time, because we have been blessed with the gift of each other and the ability to give thanks for our differences and the wisdom to know differences are not divisions and gratitude knows no theology. We are grateful for we are able to give thanks for the courage to not be content with the way things are 
and for the strength to continue to work to heal our hurting world. As we celebrated in gratitude, you met some of the members of the Venice Interfaith Community Association. We sincerely hope that you will join us and support us, and together we will work year round to bring healing and understanding to our communities. We will find peace knowing that the creator of our world, the creator of the universe, is a risking, prodigal, extravagant, mothering and fathering creator. We are grateful to the ruler of the universe who hides in the humble, the common, the stuff of this earth. Because God lives in creation, God lives in us. We can see God in everyone, everywhere, and for that we are truly grateful. Last year at this time, you were invited to join us in Fellowship Hall for delicious desserts and beverages, and they were so good. Alas, we can't meet together in person, but I invite you to find safe ways to eat and drink and share with one another and to believe in the goodness of creation. We thank you, creator of the universe, for all our blessings, and we ask that you unite us and bind us together in love, mercy, and forgiveness, and that you bless our hearts and minds with all that is good, noble, true, and honorable. Inshallah, shalom, blessed be, namaste, amen. Oh, oh, oh. 